Now let's formally define what do we mean by canonical forms. There are two types of canonical forms. I'll define first one first and then the next one and I'll show you with an example. Okay. So I'll read out. See what you do is from now on from this part we are done we are done with basics. I mean what is and what is or what is not all that you know it and from now on I'm going to introduce you to some terminology so that this terminology will be useful for you in solving the gate questions as well as in understanding the further topics. So uh, you just keep taking the notes. Pause the video, take the notes. Pause the video, take the notes. Do like that. Okay. Now understand this. I'll just read it out and explain you each one. A product term which contains each of n variables as factors either in complemented or uncomplemented form is called min term. Which means product term means what? Only a term formed using uh, and a product term in which each of n variables in which contains each of n variables as factors which means that one should contain all the variables present if it function is if, it, if the function is produced you know consisting of three variables then every uh, min term should contain all the three terms right so this is the definition of a min term so understand this a product term which contains each of n variables as factors either in complemented or uncomplemented form is called min term so if you are talking about a min term if a function is made of three variables all these variables should be present in the min term for example if the function is made of three variables a b c then the min term should contain all these three so like this a into b into c this is the min term or a b prime c why a variable can occur either in its complement or in its true form right so I either as uh, you know, complemented or uncomplemented form. A variable can occur in any of the forms. Now, this every term is called a min term. So, uh, anything which is made of three variables is min term, right? And if you have a variable like this, if you have a term like this, a, b, but the input is, you know, consisting of or the function is made of three variables and you have a term which contains only two variables, then it should not be called as the min term, right? Now, a min term gives the value 1 for exactly one combination of a variable. So, you take any min term, any min term that will give only for one combination of uh, the input, the value will be 1, not for all the other combinations. For example, if you say the min term is A, B, C, right? Only for one combination of the assignment of truth values for A, B, C, it will be 1. What is it? 1, 1, 1. Only if you assign 1, 1, 1 to A, B, C, then only you get the value to be 1. If you assign any other value other than this, the value will be 0. You can check it. If I, if I assign 0, 1, 1, the value will be 0. Check anything. So, 1, 0, 0, the value will be 0. Anything, right? Or you can take one more example. Let us say the min term is A, B prime C. Only for one assignment of the, you know, input, it will be 1. Only for single combination it will be 1. For all the other combinations it will be 0. For example, this one will be 1 only if the input is 0. Sorry. Only if the input is 1, 0, 0. Sorry. Only if the input is 1, 0, 1. Then only this output, you know, it will give you output as 1. For any other combination of the inputs, it will not generate the output as 1. So, that is the property of the min term. So, remember that min term should contain all the variables either in complemented or uncomplemented form. And second thing is min term will always generate uh, a value of 1 only for one combination, not for all the combinations, right? And only for one combination it will generate 1 and all the other combinations will generate 0. The sum of all min terms of a function, which means if you now consider a function, right the sum of all min terms which means you take the min terms and you form the sum sum is nothing but orange the sum of all the min terms of f for which f assumes 1 which means wherever f is taking the value of 1 wherever f is taking the value of 1 that is what they are talking about the sum of all min terms of f for which f assumes 1 is called canonical sum of products so you can take all these combinations and that is called canonical sum of products. Generally, sum of products means uh, R, R of and terms. That is called sum of product. And canonical sum of products means 
the odd terms contain the and terms the min term the and terms are nothing but the min terms i'll just tell you the difference what is you know sum of products and what is you know canonical sum of products it is also called as disjunctive normal form disjunctive means or 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 means it is it is formed with the oring of various forms that is why it is called disjunctive normal form now i'll just take this example and explain you what i what we mean by this see this first of all there is a difference between sum of uh, products and canonical form canonical sum of products for this one if you if you take this one is the function function is a you no know, function is in terms of a b c if i write a plus b c plus a c something like this then this is sum of products isn't it because this is a product what is the product a into 1 and this is a product b into c this is a product a into c and in fact this is sum of products similarly what is canonical sum of products is if i write like this a b c plus a prime b c this is nothing but canonical sum of products the reason is every min term is containing all the variables here every min term need not contain all the variables so keep it in mind sum of products means it need not contain all the variables canonical sum of products means it will contain all the variables got it and now how to write the function using the min terms is they are saying that see this you have to write a sum of all the min terms for which the function has taken the value 1 so for this function f you can write it like this so for this combination the min term for this combination is a prime b prime c why only for that combination for the, only for that min term will take for this combination 0 0 1 a value of 1 that is why i am writing it as c whenever the value is 0 you write it as complement therefore a prime and whenever the value is 0 you write as complement b prime and whenever the value is 1 you write directly a prime b prime c plus now check this one this one also has to be written right so here it is complement therefore a prime b c prime a prime b c prime plus now i am talking about this one a b prime c prime a b prime c prime plus now i am talking about this one a b c prime a b c prime therefore the function is now written as the function is now written as sum of min terms of all the min terms for which the function assumes one right so what is the meaning of it is if the input is given as 0 0 1 then among all these min terms only one min term will give a true value which means a value 1 and that min term is already included here therefore if we assign this input this particular input to all these min terms definitely you are going to get the output as 1 why because exactly for this one at least one you are going to get the output as 1 that is how these four terms are useful in representing the entire function right similarly if you give the input as 0 1 0 the second term will give the value of 1 that is why the function will assume the value of 1 similarly the third term and this one right and we are we need not include all these got it so what happens if i include all this is if i include anything if i include a prime b prime c prime what happens is if i include a prime b prime c prime then the for the value of 0 0 0 that a prime b prime c prime will become 1 which will show that f is having a value of 1 for this combination which is wrong therefore only for the combination for which f is showing 1 you include the min terms so that whenever that particular input is given to the f only that particular min term will show 1 and all of them will show all the remaining will show 0 anyway the function will show 1 got it so this is how we can define it in shortcut how we could write it is see this if you convert this into decimal numbers this is nothing but 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 right now how can you write it now the sum of product terms is nothing but sum is represented with sigma and what are the min terms what are the min terms for which we got this one is one and other, what is the other one the other one is two and what is the other one four and the other one is six so this is the compact representation of the same thing 
either you write like this which is nothing but sum of all these mean terms or you write like this both are going to represent the function got it now there is one more uh, normal form this uh, you know one more canonical form that is nothing but the it is if it is conjunct to you know disjunct to normal form there is conjunct to normal form we shall we shall see about it there i am going to write the same kind of definitions with slight changes okay now we shall see with example how to represent a function in some other form then we shall see about uh, how to use this functions in general okay